How many telemarketers does it take to change a light bulb? Only one, but he has to do it while you are eating dinner. Today, I'm going to recap a 2010 action crime film called Kick-Ass. Dave Lezeski is a typical teenager who's a nobody at high school but has two good friends, Todd and Marty. He often fantasizes about women and is in love with Katie Doxma, who barely notices him. His mom died of an aneurysm and, as opposed to comic superheroes who experience tragedy before their lives change, Dave realizes that as a regular human, life just goes on. At the comic book cafe, Dave wonders why nobody tries to be a superhero, which both Todd and Marty tell him. It's impossible and stupid to be one, unless they have superpowers or are rich. Suddenly, Chris D'Amico, the spoiled but lonely son of a local mobster, Frank D'Amico, comes into the comic store. Todd suggests having Chris be their friend, so nobody would mess with them anymore. Todd and Marty force Dave to approach Chris, but when he attempts to talk to him, Chris' bodyguard scares Dave away. On their way home, Dave and Todd get robbed by a pair of street gang members. Dave sees a guy standing by the window across the building and gets pissed when the witness does nothing to help them. This inspires Dave to become a superhero who will do things differently. He orders a diving suit off the internet and remodels it into a superhero costume. He fantasizes about being a hero now more than ever and feels good about himself. Across town, Frank orders his right-hand man, Joe, and his men to torture one of his associates, who claims that a man resembling Batman attacked their dealers and stole all of their supplies. Thinking it's more likely that his associate stole the supply for profit, Frank has him tortured and killed before taking Chris out to the movies. Meanwhile, ex-policeman Damon McCready trains his 11-year-old daughter, Mindy, to take a bullet while wearing a bulletproof vest by shooting her at close range. Damon helps his daughter up and takes her out for ice cream. Dave trains to be a superhero for a few weeks, though he hesitates to jump across a building as the fear still gets to him. After training, he sees the men who robbed him and Todd trying to break into someone's car. He gets scared off, but when he's out of their sight, he removes his clothes, revealing his suit underneath. He walks back in, hiding a baton in his back. He is laughed at, but confronts them, leading to a fight. It ends when the robbers stab Dave before running off. He stumbles towards the road and gets hit by a car, which quickly drives off. An ambulance arrives, and Dave asks the paramedic to hide his suit, worried about people finding out about it. Hence, he arrives and gets admitted to the hospital with nothing on. Joan reports to Frank that his initial assumption about his missing shipment is incorrect. Chris attempts to hop into the conversation, wanting to learn about his dad's business, but Frank dismisses him, which upsets Chris. Frank sends his men to take care of that Russian mobster he believes is responsible for messing with his shipments. The Russian gets put inside a giant industrial microwave, used for treating lumber, while being questioned by Joe. But before he could tell them who sold him their supply, he exploded. Dave eventually recovers and gets out of the hospital, almost as good as new, but with a few physical revisions. Due to the car accident breaking his bones, he now has metal plating supporting his body. Because of some damaged nerve endings, he also has a higher threshold for pain. He returns to school and is stunned when Katie starts a conversation with him. Katie asks Dave to hang out with her and her friend, Erica, offering to treat him to coffee. Confused yet excited, he approaches his friends, who burst his bubble when they explain that Katie likes to befriend lame ducks. Rumors that he's gay have been circulating at school, since the police claimed his clothes had been stripped off when the ambulance found him. Initially horrified at the news, Dave accepts his new social standing as it might be the only way to be close to Katie. Despite everything, Dave is still determined to be a superhero. He fits two batons to his back as weapons and sets up a MySpace account for his superhero alter ego. With his newly gained metal platings for bones and insensitivity to pain, he's now back on track as kick-ass. One night, while patrolling, he sees a missing cat poster and decides to look for it. He finds the cat on a diner sign. He climbs up but falls to the ground, causing a running man to stumble onto him. The man, who's running for his life, gets caught and beaten up by his pursuers. 
Dave rushes to the man's aid and starts fighting off the thugs. A passerby sees what's happening, and Dave tells him to call 911. Instead of doing so, the guy goes into the diner and announces that a guy dressed up like a superhero is beating up other guys. People start to record him while he fends off the thugs. One of the men pulls out a knife and challenges Kick-Ass if he'd rather die for someone he doesn't even know, to which he says yes. He calls the men's attention to the people watching and recording them, beating up someone helplessly. They scramble off, and the victim, who's now lying on the ground, thanks him. The passerby, he asks to call 911, ask him who he is, so he introduces himself as Kick-Ass. Kick-Ass's video of the fight becomes the most watched clip on the internet and circulates over media. Chris watches the reports with his parents. While Chris thinks Kick-Ass is good, Frank criticizes his apparent lack of skill and says he will end up dead. Damon and Mindy watch the reports as well. Mindy thinks he has potential, but Damon is not impressed. Dave continues to save people and gains more supporters over his website. One day, Katie mentions that a dealer she met at the place she's volunteering at, Razzle, wouldn't leave her alone. Dave convinces her to message Kick-Ass for help. Later that night, Kick-Ass goes to Razzle's place and warns him to leave Katie alone or else he'll break his leg. The intimidation fails and Rossell and his gang members surround him. He tases Rossell in the forehead but gets pinned to the ground by his men. When Rossell takes a knife to stab him, Mindy, dressed as her vigilant alter ego, stabs Rossell in the back with her double-bladed pole arm. She fights all the gang members while Kick-Ass scrambles out of the way. She assures Kick-Ass that they are on the same team, but a surviving gang member sneaks up behind her. Damon shoots him from an opposite building through the head with a sniper rifle, surprising both Kick-Ass and Mindy. Mindy thanks Damon and steals all the gang's money. They leave through the window up to the rooftop. Mindy introduces herself as Hit Girl and Damon, dressed like Batman, on the other side of the building as Big Daddy. Hit Girl jumps across the rooftops and escapes with Big Daddy, while Kick-Ass remains as he's too afraid to follow. Dave returns home and cries himself to sleep, thinking the other two are the real deal and he's just someone stupid in a wetsuit. Joe presents a photo taken by one of their dead associates to Frank, showing Big Daddy. But since they don't know him yet, Joe suggests that it might be Kick-Ass and he's the one fighting his organization. Enraged, Frank orders Joe to dispose of Kick-Ass. That same night, Big Daddy and Hit Girl barge into Dave's room, telling him they could track him easily through his website's IP address. Dave tells them he plans to stop being kick-ass, and they tell Dave that if he ever needs help, he should put on his website that he's on vacation before they leave. Frank calls Detective Vic Higante and tells him to take care of kick-ass, but Higante refuses as it's outside his jurisdiction. Meanwhile, one of Frank's men, Cody, is late. Big Daddy and Hit Girl kidnapped Cody and killed him after forcing him to spill information about Frank's business relations. Meanwhile, Dave lives the dream of being intimately close to Katie as he helps her with self-tanning. Katie tells him it's been a week since she heard from Rosal, and Dave acknowledges it nervously. In Damon's house, an officer named Marcus enters and sees his collection of weapons. Marcus used to be Damon's partner. However, Damon was relieved from duty after being framed by Frank. He was sentenced to five years in prison. This led to his wife, who was bearing Mindy at that time, taking her own life. Mindy was left in Marcus' care while Damon trained to become a vigilant, vowing revenge against Frank. After getting out of prison, Damon reunited with Mindy and hid away while training her. The two reunite and Marcus argues that Mindy has the right to a normal childhood. Marcus warns Damon that Gigante is looking for the vigilantes but agrees to keep their secret. Frank becomes extremely tense and paranoid. One day, he sees Kick-Ass, follows him, and beats him to death, not realizing that he is just an imitator. Eventually, Katie learns that Rosal is dead and blames herself for messaging Kick-Ass. Dave comforts her, leading Katie to tell him she wishes he was not gay. In Frank's office, Joe scolds Frank for getting his hands dirty, in desperation to finish off Kick-Ass, while Chris eavesdrops. 
Chris barges into the office and offers an alternative solution to catch kick-ass. Chris dons his superhero alter ego, called the Red Mist, and frames one of Frank's associates. Having caught a known dealer, the news of Red Mist circulates in the media. Eventually, Red Mist contacts Kick-Ass, and the two meet. Red Mist claims he was inspired by Kick-Ass and offers to be his sidekick. When Kick-Ass hesitates, Red Mist shows him his sports car to impress him. He convinces Kick-Ass to fight crime with him while driving him to Frank's warehouse, where Frank's men are waiting. Frank learns that Red Mist has successfully convinced Kick-Ass to join him, making him proud of Chris for coming up with the plan. However, when they get to the warehouse, everything is burning to the ground. Kick-Ass follows Red Mist inside, who sees that everyone is dead. Red Mist snatches a teddy bear from the shelf, runs out of the building with Kick-Ass, and parts ways as the building explodes. Frank sees the destruction of his stronghold and worries for his son. Chris returns and announces that Kick-Ass isn't the real threat. He shows Frank the footage from the nanny cam inside the teddy bear he saved from the fire, showing Big Daddy killing all of Frank's men and burning the warehouse. Frank convinces Chris to set up a trap to catch Big Daddy. Marcus warns Damon that Higante knows it wasn't Kick-Ass who eliminated Frank's men. He advises Damon to lay low, but instead, Damon tells Mindy it's time to end Frank. Kick-Ass decides to give up crime fighting, but not before going to Katie's house to reveal his identity. Katie gets startled and uses pepper spray on his face. Dave removes his mask to reveal his face and confesses that he isn't gay, but is in love with her. This shocks Katie, but she forgives him and they start making love. The two begin dating while Todd and Marty are left to hang out with Erica. Free from Kick-Ass's troubles for a week, Dave sees spam emails from Red Mist requesting his help. He tells Katie what he's doing and leaves to meet up with Red Mist, who tells him they're being blamed for killing the guys at the warehouse. Red Mist convinces Kick-Ass to contact Big Daddy for help. He obliges by posting on vacation on his MySpace. While reviewing their newly bought mysterious weapon, Damon and Mindy notice the distress signal, so they respond to Kick-Ass to meet them at one of their hideouts. Red Mist and Kick-Ass drive to the location, followed by Frank's men. Big Daddy was not expecting to see Red Mist, but he let them in. Hit Girl, sitting by the window, greets them, but Red Mist shoots her in the chest. She falls out of the window, and Big Daddy screams. Frank's men bolt in and knock Big Daddy and Kick-Ass unconscious. Red Mist orders them to let Kick-Ass go, since he considers him a friend, but they still put him in the back of a van. One of the thugs grabs Big Daddy's bazooka from the wall and drags Red Mist home to Frank. Chris protests to Frank that his men went against the deal by involving Kick-Ass with Big Daddy. Frank explains that Big Daddy is important to him for the sake of his business, but eliminating Kick-Ass will warn everyone to reconsider becoming superheroes. A countdown starts for the unmasking of Kick-Ass, and all of New York is watching. Katie watches in excitement, thinking that it's Dave's decision. But she's consumed by dread, as a live video feed on the internet shows Kick-Ass and Big Daddy handcuffed to chairs, while masked men prepare to torture and expose them. Marcus also watches helplessly, while Frank's men start ruthlessly hitting the two. They splash gasoline at Big Daddy as Hit Girl, who survived getting shot, sneaks into the hideout and shuts down all the lights. Using her night vision goggles, she attacks the men inside. One manages to light Big Daddy on fire, yet as he burns, Big Daddy guides Hit Girl, allowing her to finish off everyone. Hit Girl extinguishes her father, but it is too late. She shares one last moment with him before he takes his last breath. Hit Girl uncuffs Kick-Ass, and they return to their hideout. Dave attempts to convince her to give up their vigilant lifestyles, but Mindy wants to avenge her father. Realizing that it was his fault, Dave agrees to help her. He takes the mysterious weapon that Big Daddy recently bought and assembled. At Frank's headquarters, his men are alert, waiting for Kick-Ass and Hit Girl to appear. Mindy knocks on the front door, posing as a school troll. Having never seen Mindy's face before, they let her inside. She acts lost and sad as she tells them she can't find her parents. 
Convinced, one of the guards kneels to offer his phone, but Mindy stuffs a pistol inside his mouth and shoots. The others act too late as Mindy quickly finishes them off. She swaps into her hit girl costume and eliminates Frank's men with speed and stealth. She resorts to knives when she runs out of bullets. One thug retrieves the bazooka while the others trap hit girl behind a counter. As he's about to launch the bazooka, they all hear a mechanical sound from the windows. Kick-ass, hovering with a jetpack and rapid-fire miniguns, quickly finish off the rest of Frank's men. Inside Frank's office, he and Chris listen as the last gunfire subsides, thinking his men succeeded. To their dismay, Hit Girl and Kick-Ass barge into the office, prepared to finish what they started. Frank commands Chris to fight off Kick-Ass, to which he unhappily obliges, while Frank battles against Hit Girl. Kick-Ass wielding his two batons and Red Mist whipping out a wooden katana, square off in an adjacent dojo, eventually knocking each other out unconscious simultaneously. Hit Girl fights Frank aggressively, but struggles since Frank is also a skilled fighter. Frank's attacks become increasingly brutal as he beats Hit Girl, slamming her on the desk. He grabs a handgun and is about to shoot Hit Girl when Kick Ass appears, holding the bazooka. Frank shifts to aim his gun, but isn't fast enough. Kick Ass fires the rocket, sending Frank out the window and exploding in the air. Chris wakes up and pulls a sword, but it is too late as he finds Kick Ass flying off in his armed jetpack with Hit Girl. They land on another building's rooftop, and Kick-Ass unstraps the pack. Hit-Girl thanks him, saying Big Daddy would be proud of them both. Hit-Girl finally takes off her weight and mask, showing him her face and telling him her actual name. Mindy returns to Marcus' care and enrolls at Dave's school, redeeming her lost childhood. Two bullies attempt to startle the new kid to give her lunch money, but Mindy, seemingly excited, smiles and cracks her knuckles. Dave is kissing Katie at a coffee shop, and Marty is kissing Erica while Todd sits reading. Though Dave stopped being kick-ass, his actions inspired many to follow in his superhero footsteps. Nevertheless, Red Mist sits in his late father's office, dressed in his revamped superhero guise, and plotting vengeance against kick-ass, hit-girl, and anyone who gets in his way. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.